Hispanics. But blacks and Hispanics are getting arrested more. All these graphs and much more information is in a report by myself and, and Deborah Small, uh, attorney and activist in New York, uh, released a, just a half, month and a half ago by the New York Civil Liberties Union. Um, this report is called Marijuana Arrest Crusade. Uh, and you can find it by going to Google and typing Marijuana Arrest Crusade. And the first thing that will pop up is it's, it's a 100-page PDF of it. The, and the New York Civil Liberties Union has some uh, summary stuff on the website of it. Um, why has the New York Police Department been making this enormous number of marijuana possession arrests, and why are they so racially biased? And I think the answer to this is really important, uh, and I can't really tell you much today, right now. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of a discussion of it in the papers that you have, and there's a lot more discussion of it in here. Uh, but I think understanding why the NYPD, New York Police Department, is making these marijuana arrests um, is uh, the same reasons they're making uh, many other misdemeanor arrests and why police departments all across the United States make loads and loads of misdemeanor arrests. Probably something like 70% of all arrests in, in, um, in the United States um, are misdemeanor arrests. The FBI doesn't distinguish misdemeanors and felonies, so they have to be inferred by it from other sources. Why do the police make arrests in a nutshell? Uh, because significant constituencies like it. Uh, ordinary patrol cops and narcotics cops like making mar misdemeanor marijuana arrests. Um, they're safe. They're easy. They're not going to get shot and stabbed. They're not going to get um, assaulted. Their um, New York police get overtime for making the arrest. Supervisors make overtime in New York when the when the when the people working for them make them make the arrests. If they make an arrest toward the end of a shift, you can get several hours of overtime. Uh, supervisors like the arrest because they know where the cops are. They're writing down. Supervisors like the arrest because when something big comes up, a fire, an emergency, they can pull cops off and making um, minor arrests and send them away and nothing bad happens. Supervisors and top brass like the arrest because it allows them to collect information on uh, people, especially young people who've never before been in the database. There's nothing the police can do that gets more uh, new people into the database in the broad net of misdemeanor uh, marijuana arrests and other such things. Why are, they so, why are they so racially biased? This is really important. Um, police activities are concentrated in New York and almost every place else in certain high crime neighborhoods, which tend to be overwhelmingly black and Hispanic. Um, they make stop and frisks. New York City in 2006 made over made 500,000 stop and frisks. In the course of the stop and frisks, they will uh, search people um, or, or trick them into revealing what they have, and they make the arrests as the result of that. Blacks and Latino neighborhoods are the prime places where the stop and frisks happen, but blacks and Latinos are stopped over throughout New York City at much higher rates uh, than whites are. Um, Blacks and Latinos are stopped so often they're familiar with what the procedure is. Um, a white middle class or seemingly middle class a suspect uh, might know someone, a politician, an important individual who could cause problems for the police officer and his or her commanders. Um, so police find it prudent to avoid such middle class um, seeming uh, suspects and to concentrate on, on the poor, likely poorer um, and uh, unconnected individuals, especially in the certain neighborhoods. What this means is that in my neighborhood near Columbia University, uh, white students walking around with marijuana in their pocket are almost never stopped and searched. However, you go a few blocks um, east into central Harlem and the stop and frisk rates and the searching rates and the arrest rates are much higher in Washington Heights likewise. For the NYPD, black and Latino youth and for police departments in general are easy and obvious sources of arrests. The police stop them so familiar, routinely they're familiar with what is involved. 
It is, these arrests, I suggest, are not driven so much by individual racism. Of course, there's individual, there's in cops with individual racism that occurs everywhere, but mostly these arrests are not about that. Um, uh, they are the result of a systemic focus within the police department on black and Latino young men. The police catch so many more of one kind of fish because they are mostly searching in certain waters looking mainly for certain kinds of fish. And the effects are clearly racially biased, discriminatory, unjust, unfair. Adding these young people to the DNA databases will compound the bias, creating per permanent DNA criminal suspects out of people whom the NYPD found it convenient to arrest. And now I'm just going to do a speed show. This is New York City. What's going on nationally? And I just want to show you very quickly what's been happening nationally. These are marijuana arrests, uh, blacks and whites, um, in a just a uh, selection of major cities and counties in the United States. It shows some, some high ones, some low ones. Um, the middle is probably pretty close to indicative of what's going on nationally. Um, the FBI uh, stats do not uh, collect information on Hispanics, which are not considered a race, so the FBI data only has blacks and whites. Um, for some of the, the Western places, uh, uh, Latinos are folded in with whites, so the white rates are actually lower than that uh, in many places. So New York's marijuana arrests are extreme, but they are not unique. Um, and Atlanta is interestingly beating New York on this stuff. Um, all drug use. One of the least understood things about drugs is that whites use dr every drug, including crack cocaine, more than, um, at higher rates, more often uh, than blacks and Latinos. Uh, this shows all drugs except marijuana nationally uh, for two years, lifetime, uh, last year and last month prevalence. Um, drug arrests, however, are a different story. This is all U.S. drug arrests nationally, uh, 94 to 2004. The uh, white rates are, uh, the, or rather the black rates are two, three, and sometimes even four times the rate of uh, white arrests. Um, these, this pulls out only the drug possession arrests. Fast, almost nearly all of these are misdemeanors. Um, again, um, you have uh, blacks being arrested at two, three, or four times the rate of whites. Um, this shows drug arrests for the last, um, well, since 1970, um, ever climbing. Um, and if uh, the DNA databases are expanded to more crimes, uh, this is what we're looking at, um, them catching. Uh, this shows the breakdown of those arrests for, for the last, for 15 years, um, on the basis of which, how much are sales and possession. The sales arrests, as you can see, are flat. The possession arrests have grown and grown uh, and grown. Almost all of those are misdemeanor arrests. So this is who uh, is going to be caught up in this. What about some other offenses? Drug, um, uh, drug offenses in New York, I said, are slightly under 25, 22 percent, 23 percent of all um, ar arrests and a third of all misdemeanor arrests. What about the other misdemeanor arrests? Well, this pulls out a bunch of them. Uh, vandalism, gambling, liquor law, drawing, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, again, for all the other misdemeanor arrests, blacks are arrested at double or more the rate of whites. So, um, and finally, um, this is from a really terrific report called Targeting Blacks, put out by Human Rights Watch just a few weeks ago. Targeting Blacks. Um, and the um, uh, focusing on race and the drug war. This is 35 states. Uh, their graph shows the light bars are, are black people, the black bars are white people. Um, you, you can figure that one out yourself. Uh, and they write, in 2003, African Americans constituted 53% of all persons who entered prison. 
the, we're back now to felonies, to what's in the database now. This is what's in the database now. 53% of all persons who entered prison because of a drug conviction were African Americans. Blacks were 10 times more likely than whites to enter prison for drug offenses. A black man was 11.8 times more likely than a white man to enter prison for drug offenses. A black woman was five times more likely than a white woman to enter prison for drug offenses. Among all African Americans entering prison, almost two out of five, or about 38 percent, were convicted of drug offenses compared to one in four whites, about 25 percent. Most of these people have had their DNA collected and stored in CODIS and other criminal justice databases right now in the 21st century. This is already a major part of Jim Crow's database.